Thank you, Garo. That was wonderful to hear all that. And well, you painted the cane writer, and I'm glad you did. I think. And Father Jimmy Murray has also done a foreword, and we also thank Jimmy too for it's in the book. You can read it yourselves, and uh, it assesses the book quite well. Better than I will. Now, for, first of all, I suppose I need to thank uh, a lot of people, especially those two. Uh, I want to thank uh, members of my own family, uh, a wife, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a wife, uh, some three sons, sometimes that is not as patient as the wife, but he's still the same, and very helpful. And two grandsons are here to cheer me on. And um, I was just said to, to, to thank. Um, I have uh, uh, a lot of relatives here that I want to thank. And uh, people who spared me, particularly, I uh, must refer to Gerard in that light. When I brought him my own, Nina has it over during the bank, the old um, food scap that uh, my grandfather wrote in. It was a it's a terrible old thing. And I was in pencil, well written, but worn away and tongue away and somebody written but uh, they took a, a new uh, look at us and things uh, I hope you magnify in class. There it is. <laughs> See it's fairly it's fairly ragged now and Mind you, for 145 or 7 years of age, uh, in a farmhouse here in Ireland, this lasted fairly well and we minded fairly well. Even in my young days, uh, I used to be at home on winter's evening, you know, and in the winter time, there was nothing. In the summer, you could go up to play football or climb stacks or something, or get into some mystery. But in the winter time, there was not much to do with a dark, dull winter evening except read. And it was no newspaper, no book or anything available. So you could light the candle and take out this and the white hat and the, 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 the run boys from some town and stories like that. I knew lots of them by, by word really. And so they've come back to me gradually, but that memory's gone now. My age begins, things begin to fail. <laughs> and and that's, that's good with us. Uh, and the strange thing about, you know, you know, from one, one side now and you have to turn it up that way. You turned over the other way and, and you're, you're, you're turned right. So <laughs> and the, the, uh, that's the birth, that's the marriage, is it? There's a, they make it a dress or something. There's one of little Will's sisters that tempted a better put away. Anyway, uh, I should thank uh, especially uh, Rosemount Social Initiative for uh, all their support and guidance and help in this, in everything they did, even tonight, but over the last six months, they've been supporting me, guiding me, and things like that. And they've been instrumental in getting, I hope, some grant from the Westmead Arts Committees, or uh, Creative Arts, I'm not sure, but, but um, that's a big help. Uh, I started I worked on this, typing it out, five years ago or whatever. And it took me a long time to get to grips with it. I, I kind of typed it and I was slow with the computer and things. And the thing did not go the way it should be told. I'd tell it to go one way and then I'd have to call Lee and she'd say, what? No. So I had to go down to the room anyway and fix it, all right. So I thought I'd get away with that for a lot of time. Can get a bit tired later on and said, oh, no, no, after a month or two of it. So you remember what I tell you, write it down. <laughs> but anyway, we got through that. And uh, I did take, I don't know how, an hour, you know, and I could photocopy it and <coughs> the gist of it was there. And then showed it to people like Paddy Behan. Now, Paddy is from my vintage, or I'm, I'm getting near his vintage. So he read it, and the next time I met him was about three weeks or a month away, and he says, Jesus, that's good stuff. That's a great book. Where did he get that? 
That was some man that wrote all that. You never expected Off the Cane to be ridiculous. <laughs> he was amazed by the romantic ones in it. <laughs> no, I don't know what other he had more to read them or not, but <laughs> it's one of our here anyway. <laughs> so, um, uh, I suppose I should say, uh, who else was at the tank? A whole lot of people at the tank. Uh, all my brothers have been very helpful, and their wives are very good to me. And uh, even Pat was now gone, uh, had his input into some of this and ideas and memories and things like that. And um, there was a, a small coterie of friends from the area, like the Kings and some of the Bolands and different people who had, and had photographs and assistance in different times and different ways. And I was at that particularly of their encouragement. I, I didn't know whether this was worth uh, printing or would anybody read it or not. And uh, that's where Gerard kind of said, apart from that, it's something valuable that people should be aware of. But I suppose when I think of it, uh, young people nowadays would read it like I did at eight or nine years of age. Uh, past money and night for me. And um, I'm very grateful to Jimmy Murray as well. Good support and encouragement. And uh, <coughs> uh, a lot of people uh, give, give me photographs and stuff, and I, you know, I wasn't able to put all these in. When I came to fine tuning this bit of work, I had a lot of advisors in the the three sons particularly, and <laughs> some of the in laws and things. and. Uh, they said, sir, that, that, you can't have that in there, that doesn't go there. It's not got to do with the story at all. <laughs> it's like it's put the photographed old dog and things in it, you know. <laughs> um, the, the book was by my grandfather. He was 19 years of age. He was an only son, an only child. Uh, his, sorry, his uh, father had married the widow Shields. Uh, she, she, he died. Remember Shales Wood? Yeah. That Widow Shales. And uh, uh, he married her uh, in 18. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, was born, he was born in. Uh, yeah. yeah. He married her around 1850, and young William was born in 1851. It's 1851, just after the famine. And uh, then he married a seven from Cora, uh, Huey Seven's what, grand aunt, grandmother, grand, uh, from Cora. She lived to be 44, and she uh, had six children during that 25 years from living. And it must have been a hard old life, I would think. Um, And he left his sister in Dasford who married Lynn's. And he left two brothers. Uh, and apparently, uh, two brothers settled in uh, upstate New York in a place called Saratoga uh, on the same street next door to one another. And had each of them married and had children. And we only took up that record here about a month ago. It's the same for that. Uh, and one of those was supposed to have worked at the building of the church here in Rosemont back in the 1840s and 50s. Uh, I Their son that was born, William, was the first kid and born in Rosemont. He had six children. And uh, I've written a little synopsis of life for those six children, their dates and that kind of stuff. Not to have to put, it, put them down in any case historically concerned, but just to have the basics of where they lived and died. Uh, 
and if any of the grandchildren or grand nephews or whatever want to follow on, it's up to them. I put a few photographs in the book, there are 30 photos or something there, mostly people of uh, the Tongo and the cost and they're on the back of the book. And I had a grand one of the top uh, <coughs> to the Nacosta Hill in snow, covered with snow last January. Uh, so I didn't want to tell you about that one. Um, there's not much else I want to do now. I have a few people who want to read some of them, poems, if it's all right. Uh, you're getting stuffy, I suppose I'm tired. Uh, and uh, some maybe want to sing some of them.